Well, hello everyone. Uh, I want to give you a review for the final in the uh, ITT class MA1210, their um, Algebra 1 class. I'm going to give you three quadratics, one cubic, some complex numbers, some square roots, and systems of equations. I think you'll like it. Okay, let's start off with some quadratic equations. Quadratic equations are not hard, they just simply require some practice. Now I'm going to give you basically three types. Factorable quadratic equations, by far the easiest. You should um, hopefully have mastered that by now. Uh, square root property, that works on certain types of quadratic equations. But if you've got a quadratic equation that nothing seems to work on, you use the atom bomb method, which is the quadratic formula. Okay, let's try a few of each. Now here's one that's fairly factorable. Um, how do you know that? Well, give it a shot. Okay, first question you want to ask, oh, first you want to put down your uh, x's and your parentheses, but the first question you want to ask, are the signs the same or are they different? And to understand that, you need to look at this sign, the second sign in the uh, quadratic equation. If that's a plus sign, then the two signs that go here have to be the same. They have to be. Are they plus or a minus? Well, in this case, the only way you're going to get a minus sign here is to put two minus signs there. Okay. So you got everything filled in except for the numbers, so you're almost done. So ask yourself, what two factors of 18 that add up to 9? I'll just think about it for a while. But that should be obvious. The answers, uh, the numbers you need are 6 and 3. Now, if you foil this, I guarantee you you'll end up with this again. So this is the first equation fully factored. What are your answers in this case? Well, it would be a positive 6 and a positive 3. Okay. Here's another one. Let's put our parentheses in place and now ask the... Uh, the question, are the signs the same or are they different? Well, we've got a minus sign there that this time, that tells me that these two signs are different. And we'll make one plus and one minus. Now, can we name two factors of 10 that subtract to 3? Subtract to 3, because the signs are different this time. And yes, that would be 2 and 5. And uh, that means our answers in this case would be negative 2 and positive 5. Okay. That brings us to the square root property. Square root property simply says that if you have x squared equal to any constant k, then your two answers would look like that, the plus or minus the square root of k. All right. Let's take a look at one. Square root of, uh, excuse me, x squared equals 49. What's the square root of 49? Using the square root property, we know the answer is going to be plus or minus the square root of 49, which is plus or minus 7. If you want the uh, x squared equals 36, just do it again. Your answer is plus or minus 6. This one's a little more interesting because I got these parentheses involved. Okay, but you can apply the same property. Okay. So what we're going to do is get rid of the square and take plus or minus the square root of 81, which is plus or minus 9. We've still got this minus 2 on this side, so let's add 2 to both sides. Your answer is going to be 2 plus or minus 9, and that, of course, would be 11 or negative 7. Okay. Well, I'll take a look at this guy. This one we're going to need the atom bomb method on. This is a rather famous equation because its answer is a, a, a number called phi. But to do this, we need the formula. And here's the quadratic formula. In this case, a is 1, b is negative 1, and c is negative 1. Plug all those numbers in. And you get this, which simplifies to that. And like I said, 1 plus radical 5 over 2 is a very famous number. It's called phi. All right, let's take a look at something else now. Here's going to be a cubic equation, meaning that the highest degree is a 3. 
If you get something like that, factor it if possible. Sometimes you can use factor by grouping. If not, see if you can find one of the answers to synthetic division and then solve the resulting quadratic. That'll be our strategy. Now here's a typical cubic equation. Gosh, if I didn't tell you one of the roots, what would you say? Well, the rational root theorem says, of, in this case, it would have to be one of the factors of six if there is a rational root. Why don't we try one? So let's set, see if one works. So let's set up our, um, our synthetic division. We'll put the one in the little box. In this case, I'm just going to underline it. This one is the um, uh, coefficient of that one. The negative two comes from there. The negative five comes from there. And the six comes from there. I'm going to bring down this one, multiply it by one, put its result there. Well, first I'm going to bring it down. Now I'm going to multiply this one by that one. We get a one, and when you add negative two and one, you get a negative one. Let's repeat the process. One times negative one will be negative one. Negative one and negative five should be a negative six. Okay, so we have our negative six here. Now let's go 1 times negative 6, which will give us a negative 6 here. And when we add these two together, we'll get a 0. And that looks like what we have. You'll get something that looks like this now, once you do the division. By the way, this 1 here is the coefficient of that. The negative one is the coefficient of the x term, and the negative six is your constant term. That's where it comes from. Now, let's see, can we factor the x squared minus x minus six? We sure can, just using the methods we've used, seen before, and you get this. Now, just ask yourself, what would make this one, this factor zero, this factor zero, and this factor zero? If you understand that, you can give me all three answers. And the answers are 1, 3, and negative 2. Okay? Now let's talk about i, which is the square root of negative 1. Uh, all complex numbers are numbers that can be written in the form of a plus bi, where a and b are real, and i is the imaginary, imaginary number, which we said equal to the square root of negative 1. I'd like you to be able to add these. If you can add them, all you have to do is combine the two real terms, the 7 and the 2, and the two imaginary terms, the 3i and the negative 5i. You put those together, you get 9 minus 2i. Can you subtract them? All right, well, you're going to do 7 minus 2, and 3i, in this case, minus a 5i. A well, a minus and a minus makes it plus. So what do we get? 5 plus 8i. A lot of people have trouble with the double negative, but you got a negative here and a negative here. That makes it positive. So you got 5i five, five plus 3i, and that's where the 8i came from. If you see something like this, you should immediately think FOIL. First, outer, inner, last. You're going to multiply the first, the outer, the inner, oh, excuse me, the first, the outer, the inner, and then the last. So we're going to use FOIL, and we'll get these four numbers. Notice that the two middle ones can be combined, and we get that. Okay. Just think of FOIL anytime you want to multiply two complex numbers. Square roots of any negative number are not that complicated. You should think of splitting this up into nine times well, 9 times negative 1. Square root of 9 will be 3, and the square root of negative 1 is i. Do the same thing here, and you get 3i plus 2i, which you can combine to be 5i. Okay. Systems of equations is the last thing we study in this class, and I'd like you to use the addition method on something like this, which means you will add the two x terms together vertically, You'll add the two y terms together, notice that they're going to drop out, and you're going to add the two constant terms together. If you do that, you get this, notice the y's dropped out, 3x equals 6, 
So x is 2. Well, that tells you what x is. It doesn't tell you what y is. How are we going to get y? Well, why don't we take this 2 and plug it right there. So we'll get 2 plus 2y equals x, 8. 2 plus 2y equals 8. Subtract 2 from both sides. 2y equals 6. Divide by 2. y equals 3. Okay, so now you know both x and y. What's a good test? Why don't you take the 2 and plug it into the second equation, and y equals 3, plug that into this equation, and make sure it's right. And you'll get 2 times 2 minus 2 times 3 equals negative 2. Well, that's 4 minus 6, and that's a true statement. Okay? I hope that helps you. If you have any questions, let me know.